Ryan, and welcome to episode 109 of the Dinner Sisters podcast, where two sisters taking on the nightly challenge of dinner. I'm Kate Schultz, living and working in Rhode Island, in my house, always in my house. <laughs> I'm a passionate cook and recipe collector, always thinking about my next meal. And I'm Betsy Wallace, also in my house, Kate, here in Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> as we all are. I love dinner time, especially these days, because I think we're all having dinner at home. But so like, so much home dinner, <laughs> so many home cooked meals, and like a lot of people out there, I think right now could mm-hmm. use help planning and cooking for my family. I've got I've got we're a family of five. I've got three kids. In case you're a new listener, they're elementary school aged. They are now five, eight, and ten. Wow, soon to be six. Soon to be six. We're gonna move the whole. We're gonna shift them all up one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, our goal with this podcast, we want to cook a little better, learn a little bit about food, and most importantly, figure out what the heck to have for dinner. Here's how this works. Like every week, we have three recipes that we cooked and reviewed from popular food blogs. Like anywhere on the World Wide Web, I can find a recipe. You'll find all the recipes, tips, the smorgasbord, and our shopping list on our website at dinnersisters.com. You can also get them sent directly to your inbox by subscribing to our newsletter if you'd like to preview the recipes before listening and maybe get some other fun stuff every now and then. Okay, Kate, let's dive right in here. We have this week's recipes, which are whole grain cinnamon French toast with broiled grapes from Real Simple, a broiled flank steak with scallions from Fine Cooking, and a broiled chicken breast from Kitchen Swagger, and crispy garlic broiled chicken thighs from Taste of Home. Tell us about these a little bit. Yeah. So this episode, we're using part of the oven that, honestly, before we had this, did this episode, I really hadn't used regularly. Mm. Which, in case you didn't guess from the recipe names, were all about the broiler. Like this, you know, it's not yeah, very what a used. Fun, fun, clever episode, Kate. I love this. Thank you. Why, Always thank you surprising for us. That. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it came about from our marinade episode, which is 104, if you're interested. We had this really quick but delicious shrimp marinade. It was, like, so good. And the directions were like, why don't you broil the shrimp? And I was like, I've never broiled shrimp in my life, but I will try it. And it was so easy and so delicious. I was like, what, what else? Can you broil it? Let's, mm-hmm. let's find out. So it turns out you actually really can broil a heck of a lot of things. And oh, that's so funny. So... I have actually been asking myself a lot, too, since we've cooked for this episode, could I find a way to broil this? That's a fun way to do it. Mm. And Kate, I'll tell you, I have sort of a long and storied history with my broiler. I know. (laughs) I have, this went really (laughs) successful for me, but I I have lit more pans of nachos on actual flaming fire (laughs) than I maybe can count. I mean, it's been... I mean, over five, less than ten, maybe. But, like, lots of, <laughs> lots of Jeez. sheet pan full mm. of flaming nachos coming out of my broiler. <laughs> and I like to think I might not be alone in this. But anyways, that was the only thing I really did was did sheet pan nachos in the broiler that would may or may not start on fire. So that's Didn't you I'm once say from. you timed things in the broiler based on smelling smoke? At one point, I feel like this is an episode a long time ago have. for long-time listeners. I might have. Yeah. yeah. So this is... Here yeah, we are. Tyler and I are not. Um, but you know what? Two years of cooking, Kate, I've been, I'm like significantly improved. And I just want to say this out loud on the podcast. Now that we are home sheltering in place with this mm. whole global pandemic we find ourselves in, the other night I was thinking how grateful I am to have two years of home cooking experience oh. under my belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It could be a very different. They could be a lot more flaming nachos. There, you know, we could be surviving on flaming nachos <laughs> and like pan sautéed chicken with no sauce and shredded cheddar right now. And so, my whole family is really grateful that we've been on this journey together. <laughs> you should you should tell them that. That sounds like a good lecture topic. Right. Just to wait. You all should be grateful. (laughs) We should call Aunt Kate on FaceTime and tell her how grateful we are. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be great. (laughs) Yeah. We're really into that one. (laughs) Yes. All right. So let's get into the episode. Using the broiler, what did we Mm. do this week? 
Yeah. So first up this week, we have a breakfast for dinner option, which is always fun. Mm -hmm. Whole grain cinnamon French toast with broiled grapes from Real Simple. And I wanted something that maybe wasn't just like broiling meat. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, well, what else can I find that's broiled? Um, You go down the rabbit hole a little bit and you end up with French toast. And I love French toast. So why not? And the nice thing is that you don't have to get a stovetop going and it makes like a bunch at once. So basically to make it, you beat together eggs, milk and vanilla in a shallow bowl. If you've ever made French toast, this is a very familiar process. Um, You soak slices of multigrain bread in the custard mixture and then you just place it on a well-greased half sheet pan. Add grapes to the half sheet pan in bunches, and then you put it under the broiler on high, about six inches from the element or so. You don't want it, like, you know, right up there. You toast the bread for about three minutes on one side, and then flip for two minutes on the other. You want it nice and golden brown. Take the bread out, and then you broil the grapes for another five minutes so they get nice and soft. You sprinkle the bread with cinnamon sugar, and enjoy. You know, Betsy, how did this work out for you? So we did not use the multigrain bread as mm. suggested because... Grant actually earlier this week made the brioche bread from Bread Toast and Crumbs. Oh. Yes, it's a baking project because we're home all the time and sometimes <laughs> you can't just like homeschool. And so he made brioche. We used it for this. It was really good. We did not have great. Yeah, so oh, that okay. was excellent. And we so we made it for lunch one day. And nice. I mean it was delicious. I I think it's like a nice way to make a whole bunch of French toast at the same time without Mm. standing over the pan, which is great. I didn't have grapes, Kate. I actually went to the grocery store and I thought, uh, grapes look like something that like people could cough all over. I just, Mm, yeah, I get it. I don't know. I couldn't bring myself to buy them. I mean, I feel like the broiler would just broil off anything, but so true. I get it. I get it. I mean, Mm -hmm. we're all having those moments, so I get it. Yeah. So I had a few slices left from a loaf of bread that I baked, just like kicking around the freezer. I was like, what better mm-hmm. use for like old bread, you know, than yeah, French yeah. toast. Um, and I liked the broiled grapes. You did? They were kind of like, yeah. I mean, it was like, you have to like a warm fruit situation. Not everyone cares for that. I get it. You mm-hmm. know who I'm talking about. Those mm-hmm. There are some people on that I know listening that don't care for it. But I liked it. I mean, I like a grape. I like a raisin. If you're like that kind of fruit lover... They're good. They were delicious. Describe to me, did this grape get kind of like browned or did it burst? Um, it just got soft. They burst a little bit. I would picture like it, kind of like a cherry tomato kind of gets under okay. the, in the hot in the hot pan. You know, they get kind of warm. They soften a bit. They get a little juicy. Mine were not great grapes. Okay. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they've been sitting in the fridge for a while. And this is actually perfect to broil them because I feel like I wouldn't have maybe wanted to eat them out of hand. And mm. I made, I just threw all the grapes I had on the tray because I wasn't going to eat them and I didn't want to waste them. And honestly, like, I think I'm going to put grapes in my oatmeal tomorrow morning. It's kind of that raisiny kind of adjacent thing going on. Do you know what I mean? I like, yeah, and I, I do know what you mean. And I like this because I think you are not alone in finding yourself with the mm. left, the grapes that are sort of left. <laughs> you know? Right. The ones that are sad and you're like, oh, yes. I don't want to throw these away. And they're not uh, rotten, but they're just not crispy and good anymore. And I think exactly. this might be a great, like no food waste thing. I would actually roast them. I was thinking, you know what they'd be really good with? It's like a pork tenderloin. Oh, yum. Right? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. So that said, for me, for one person making French toast, I wasn't like the broiler is my jam for this. It was almost more work or yeah, as much that. work as a stove top, you know. Mm-hmm. But for like you or for bigger gatherings, I thought this is a great technique. I was like, oh, I could totally see doing this like at mom and dad's over Christmas or if I had a brunch, you know, if you're doing like, yeah. a brunch time kind of situation. Perfect. So this is a four to five for me. How about you? Yeah, I'm giving it the same thing because I, it, I I thought it is useful in those situations. And for us, you yeah. can have all of the French toasts in at the same time. And I'm not the person that's standing in the kitchen while everyone else is sort of eating breakfast, right. which is an issue when mm-hmm. you're doing pancakes or French toast. I did not obviously get to broil the grapes, but that sounds fun. And I always have sort of 20% of my grapes or 15% of right. my grapes sort of left in the bag. So I think I will get to try this. Yeah. So that's good And use any bread you want, kids. You know, I think the brioche just says, like, if you want to go fancy, use a brioche. Yeah. I think you could use up. I've got hamburger buns that I'm kind of looking at going, all right, I might French toast you. 
Could, you know? I, could I broil this? Could I broil? <laughs> That's the question of the episode. <laughs> it is. All right. And so our next recipe is a broiled flank steak with scallions from Fine Cooking. I feel like broiling a steak is such a classic thing to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like I've I've read about this in, like, old books and movies from the 40s and 50s, but, like, broiling a steak. Do you not do this? No. I do this all the time. Really? So Yes. For a year. This is the... I make nachos and a flank steak. Those are the two things I make in my broiler. Are you kidding me? And the flank steak does not light on fire, so I can do this (laughs) successfully. I had no idea. Yeah. That's really funny. You're like, I've been doing this for years. I had not. I had... I did... I totally hadn't. So... Well, that's funny. Well, I haven't been broiling steaks, so <laughs> there you go. I don't know. Anyway, so this is a very um, easy process, hence probably you doing it while you're burning nachos. Um, you just marinate it a little bit. We'll basically brush the marinade on, then broil. So first you clean and trim a couple bunches of green onions, you know, scallions, and toss them in some oil, salt, and pepper. Those go on, go on the sheet tray, and then you brush a salt and peppered flank steak with a marinade of soy sauce, honey, fresh ginger, and pepper. Just kind of mix that all up slap it on the steak, and then you pull back a little of that sauce for later. You throw the steak under the broiler for five minutes, and then you flip it and brush it with more marinade, broil the second side for about three minutes or until it's the temperature you like. I had to let it go a little bit longer for medium rare. Um, When the steak is done, you let it rest on a cutting board for at least five minutes before cutting and then drizzling with the reserved sauce. So, I mean... (laughs) How did everyone like the steak you always make, Betsy? Yeah, I know. So that was so funny. I didn't know we hadn't had this conversation. So I thought it was good. And again, broiling is how I usually make a flank steak indoors if I'm doing that. So I have done this quite a few times. It was not a huge discovery for me, but I liked the roasted onions on the side. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a nice addition. I will also say this is my – I have two good half sheet pans and one Mm. cheap half sheet pan, like cookie pan right yeah so if you put the if you're broiling anything and you put it on your like cheap sheet pan and then it does that like it warps in the oven yeah, under the bonk. broiler and it makes that huge sound mm. i when i was broiling the steak i was like gosh darn it why did i use that cheap pan because it yeah it did the warping sound in the oven so that was something i just wanted to bring up on mm. the podcast mm-hmm. So I ended up getting, like, almost a two-pounder flank steak. I don't know. That's what they gave me at the... It's big. It was big. (laughs) It was a big one. I was, like, out at home, and I was, like, why was my grocery bill so high? Oh, okay. All right. But in the end, I wasn't sad about it at all, because we ate it warm the first night with the onions and some white rice, and then the rest of the week was great. I I had sliced the whole thing up. I was just Mm -hmm. ready to go in the fridge, so we had sandwiches and salads it was juicy and as you know the broiler worked really well for this um for me it took longer than three minutes on the second side Mm -hmm. i don't know if it's just like the power of my broiler or whatever but you know i think just take the temp of the steak and until it's the temp that you like um you know also like it's so pantry friendly this marinade and i thought it was delicious and also i have been finding where i'm in rhode island i am more able to find red meat than i am chicken right now Yes, so me too. If you know, if you're looking for something to make dinner and you want to have something that you can like cook and then have for the rest of the week, maybe try a flank steak. I mean, it's not as inexpensive as maybe chicken thighs, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but it definitely lasted the full week. We got our value out of it for sure. So this might be something to think about. And all of my grills are in public spaces, Betsy. So oh, yes, the only thing I'm doing is broiling <laughs> from now until. I don't know when. This is a five out of five for me. It was a solid recipe. The technique was great. And I'll make sure the, the, the directions were perfect. So I'll make sure to make it again. Yeah. I also think this is a really solid method. If you haven't made a flank steak this way, you should try it, especially now if that's kind of what you can find in the grocery store. And agreed. Fine cooking always writes a good recipe. Mm-hmm. Generally, yeah. we have a lot of luck with them. So Five out of five. Let's move on. Chicken is our last thing we threw in the broiler. Mm-hmm. We have two <laughs> recipes here. We've got broiled chicken breast from Kitchen Swagger and crispy garlic broiled chicken thighs from Taste of Home. So in case you haven't noticed, we have four recipes this week. Bonus week. Woo-woo. Hey, hey. 
That's how we'll take it. All right. We have two recipes because I wasn't able to find any bone-in chicken breast. I think people are hoarding bone-in chicken breasts. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Uh, so I was like, well, I could find, I managed to get chicken thighs. So that was great. Um, and so the first recipe that you did, Betsy, for chicken breasts, pretty simple. Chicken breasts are seasoned underneath the skin. You kind of cut a slit in and then you um, peel back the skin and you put salt, pepper, and rosemary. And then you place it in a cold greased skillet. They're broiled for 25 minutes on the first side and then rotate the skillet and then broiled for 25 minutes more. So Betsy, how'd this go? I mean, I have never bought a bone-in chicken breast in my life, I don't think. Oh, really? I have a couple times, yeah. Yeah, I just, it's not really a cut of meat I ever look for. And I thought this was great. It was crispy. Oh, good. It sort of felt like a pared down, perfectly roasted chicken. If you don't want to do the whole chicken, this felt really satisfying. Yeah, Yeah. what was your rating on this one? Uh, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 because I thought it was just perfectly roasted I loved the smaller portion size, and it was great, and it was a kind of meat that I hadn't bought before. So if it's nice. something, I think this is, again, I was able to find this. It's just sort of like what you can get right now. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you can get that, this is a good way to prepare it. Yeah, maybe if you, like, the only chicken breast is bone-in. Here you mm-hmm. go. Here's a here's yeah. a way to do it. So I couldn't find the chicken breast. Um, I actually witnessed someone buy 12 of them in front of me. Oh, it's just like, what are you, what are you doing with chicken? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I made the chicken thigh recipe. That's what I could find. And for this one, you make a quick mix of garlic, soy sauce, and melted butter, which I was like, oh, okay. Uh, you brush the thighs with a mixture and then you broil for 10 to 15 minutes per side, brushing the thighs again when you turn them. You get this beautifully crisp, juicy chicken thigh that has a bit of garlic to it, not too much. I mean, it is taste of home, so things aren't going to get crazy. They were much, much more crisp than, like, baking at a lower temperature. Have you ever, like, baked a chicken thigh in a 9 by 13 pan? They're fine. I sure have, yep. Mm -hmm. They're fine, you know? Mm -hmm. These are, like, the skin got super crisp. The underside got a little crispy because of the butter. I thought the marinade was very good. I didn't blow my socks off, but it was great for a weeknight, yeah. you know, um, and I love the technique. It, it went to, came together really quickly. I'll make these thighs again. This is a solid five out of five for me. I loved it. It was great with a big salad. Yeah, it yeah. was really good. I liked, I thought, again, too, my, my like, the skin and everything was very crispy. And mm-hmm. s- that sort of, like, a really well-roasted chicken. I liked it. I was happy with it. Yeah. That. I mean, broiling does really well that caramelization, which is one of the best parts about like mm-hmm. anything, right? That mm-hmm. that like delicious crispiness or the brownness. So I think that's what's so fun about the broilers. You really get that that taste. So good. Yeah. All right, wrapping it up, the winners. Mm-hmm. For me, the steak was really good, and it was a new thing. But I'm feeling practical, and I think I'll actually make the thighs more. And so the thighs win. They were really good. Yeah, Kate. I'm going with my chicken breasts as well. Oh. I was so surprised by that. I guess it's like winner, winner, chicken dinner tonight <laughs> for us here nice. on Well played. <laughs> did you like that? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. Nice yeah. job. Nice job. <laughs> oh, boy. We're getting stir crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, if any of these recipes sound good to you, make sure to check out our show notes and grocery list at dinnersisters.com. There you'll find links to all the recipes, any tips or techniques that we discussed. And if you'd like to chat with us more, always, you can just join our Dinner Sisters Facebook group. It's so fun. We are at Dinner Sisters Podcast. You search for that on Facebook. We are pretty much on there all the time now because we have like nothing else to do. Um, And it's like the best place to be because everyone's so great and fun and doing fun things. So check it out. Okay, Kate, before we head to the smorgasbord, a break. Kate, I thought we would take a few minutes to talk about how we're going to tackle the next month mm. plus, like indefinitely, as, ever, as the pop is the phrase lately yeah. is. This will have this will last indefinitely. Oh my gosh, breathe. Yeah. Other than wine, do you mean? Other than wine? Yes. Yeah, how we're going to go about doing this podcast. So Mm -hmm. the next couple of episodes, we talked about doing a pasta episode, a Mm -hmm. rice and beans episode, some pantry-friendly things to kind of start us, and then maybe adjust and see how it's going. I think produce is actually pretty accessible right now. It's just going to the store that's getting a little trickier for all of us. So... 
it, it's just making it kind of funny to source ingredients. And I think a lot of us are also dealing with this cooking overdrive followed by cooking fatigue. And right. I know I'm feeling that too. Like I want to make the brioche bread, but then mm-hmm. I don't want to make dinner again. I'm so tired right. of it. So, <laughs> Right. Just- yeah. So I think with the, you know, a couple things is to make sure that you're turning over your ingredients in your house. Like if you bought something like a month ago, pasta and beans and things like that are stable, but maybe some, maybe you want to like refresh that, like keep things a little interesting. Um, and so I'm going to try to find some recipes that, that use the ingredients that maybe you bought in a bit of a a worry, you know, like maybe we're going to use all these black beans. Although Mm -hmm. if black beans is what you've got, that Cuban style black beans, man, yeah, that's the way to go. But we're going to talk about some different ways of making pasta, some bean recipes. I think ones maybe that you can make once and then eat a couple times. So um, we'd always love to hear your suggestions. If you um, bought too many kidney beans, let us know. That's a tricky one. But we'll work. We'll think about it. We'll figure it out. So if you have some ideas, we'd love to hear from you on our Facebook group. Or you can always send us an email at dinnersisterspodcast at gmail.com. And uh, just let us know how you're doing, you know, or just or just talk to us. Honestly, I'm an extrovert stuck in this house and um, mm-hmm. I need all the friends I can get. I think you yeah. and I both are slowly going nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. It's just an interesting time in this world. And we're all in mm-hmm. it together. And I think, I think it's been really fun to see what people are making on a Friday night and what mm-hmm. are you making on a Monday. And it just being able to be with people who also want to look at what you're making for dinner is kind of a fun thing if that's the kind of person you are. Mm-hmm. So, I think yeah. our listeners are. So if you've already been sharing on our Facebook, a big shout out to you because I think it is the listeners that make our Facebook group so amazing. And um, we really appreciate it. It just warms the cockles of our heart, as my, our mom would say. Mm-hmm. And um, we're just so appreciative for our listeners and I think for each other in this podcast, Betsy. It's been awesome. Mm-hmm. So yeah, meet us over in the Facebook group. We'll talk all things beans and pasta and how to make it actually super delicious. So Another thing I wanted to talk about, Betsy, is kind of some unexpected hits. Let's end on a high note. Mm-hmm. Things that we that have come out of some unexpected hits, some highlights that have come out of cooking all this time. And, you know, there have been some things. And for me, um, we did a cookbook review of Sweet by Helen Go and Yadam Ottolenghi. And there was a, I was looking for, one of the things I've been doing is having a little coffee break with a sweet treat. And um, so I've been... Yeah. I was like, you know, I kind of miss going to the coffee shop. Well, I'll just have like the little coffee shop experience in my house. Um, and so I've been making little sweet treats and it's her lemon poppy seed loaf cake. It's in her book. Um, it is just a very simple yet super delicious. It has like a lemon drizzle on top. It's so nice. And that was, yeah. has just been perfect with coffee. I've been really enjoying that. And then I made, I was needing comfort food. Mm-hmm. So I made the arroz caldo from episode 55. One of my favorites. Yes. So good. Yeah. I would, if you, it's a Filipino version, uh, the Filipino version of um, congi or juk. If you've made that rice porridge before, um, it's so, e- it's like easy on the stomach, easy to digest, <laughs> comfort, warm, starchy food. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And if you're craving something like that and one cup of rice, goes really far. So if you've got, you know, if you're trying to feed a bunch of people and trying to like make sure you're, you know, you're being um, not wasteful about food or kind of um, being thrifty, this is a great recipe for that. Um, So yeah, what about you, Betsy? What have been some hits? So we pulled out bread bread toast crumbs again. Such a good idea. Stafford's classic that we are all cooking from out of (laughs) listeners constantly. and us and everyone constantly and so we made the brioche and grant made that which is really fun my oldest and then we also made an apple charlotte out of that which is out of that cookbook as well and that's Ooh. just a little bit of kind of buttered bread on the bottom thin slices of butter bread with apples and then a little bit more buttered bread over the top i mean it's delicious Ooh. this is <laughs> yum same we had it for and you like our- bake it and then you bake it. Mm-hmm. So everything kind of melds together in this kind of like bready, delicious, oh sweet dough thing. And then we had some whipped cream with it. Oh, 
<gasps> for a second pot of coffee, and it was oh, delicious and amazing. Mm-hmm. So that was really fun, and that was, and I actually also today made her bulgur wheat bread. Oh, nice! Because I just thought, you know what, we could use a little bit of fresh bread, and that's what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. Is some have some cheese and cold cuts in the mm. refrigerator, and that makes it Classic. super easy. So. That is, we've been really using that a lot. And I have been kind of um, hitting up the cookbooks, which has been fun. Yeah. I have too. I have a little more time to review and look through Mm -hmm. them. I'm like constantly cooking now. You know, there's no options. Yes, which is a double-edged sword, which is Mm -hmm. really, really fun. And then, and then we just decide to order pizza. So. Yeah. And I would also say if you've got restaurants that you know and love, definitely support them if they're offering takeout options. Um, I think I've been cooking just to limit going out, but we're definitely using takeaway as we as we can kind of minimizing going out, but also using takeaway every so often. Um, it's a fairly safe thing to do if you just make sure that you dispose of the outside containers and you put things in new bowls and things. COVID isn't transmitted by food, so you you should be good as long as you make sure you're washing your hands and making sure the outsides of those containers are kind of wiped down. Another another episode in the books here mm-hmm. during this during this kind of season of life. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Uh, so coming up next week, in the midst of it all, we are having a dinner party. How it's one hundred and ten. It's 110 yes. episodes. Yes. We got to celebrate things, right? And I think that um, one of the things is we got to celebrate the good things. We've done 110 episodes next week. That's amazing. Flew by. So we are going to have a dinner party. I found a cake recipe that doesn't use a single egg, no dairy, no milk, no butter. So. Fun. Perfect Can't one wait. for this kind of time if you're running out of eggs like I happen to be. Yeah, exactly. All right, so that's what's for dinner this week. See you next time on the Dinner Sisters for our dinner party. We'll save a spot at the table for you. Would you like a little dinner in your inbox every week? Subscribe to our newsletter by going to our website at dinnersisters.com for show notes and other fun stuff. If you have some dinner ideas, you can always shoot us an email at dinnersisterspodcast at gmail.com. Last, as always, if you like what you're hearing, please review and subscribe. You know, that's how people get to know us. And maybe tell a friend, you know, in one of those Zoom cocktail parties that everyone's having, which, by the way, is an excellent idea. Thanks, and happy eating. 